Good afternoon, everybody. This is Rob Parker coming to you from Peach Business Software. It's been a long time since I've done a video on the supplier order screen. And since then, we've added a lot of features. I've done some small videos, but I thought I should bring it all together and consolidate it into one new video so that I can show you all the bells and whistles that we've added since the last one. So uh, put your seatbelts on and we'll take off and do this video for you. Okay, so here's the main desktop, as you should be familiar with at the moment. Most of you now are on V12, so all these features are right there uh, where I'm going to show you. Uh, so we'll go to the transactions, so we'll go to supplier order. So under transactions menu, uh, we go to supplier order, and we open up a supplier. And just to show you how easy it is, basically right there and then you can push the F4, you can push the generate button and it will generate an order for you. So this order is on Acme Supplies. It's for my New South Wales branch. If you're not running branches, then it'll do your entire organization. If you are running branches, then you can choose consolidate if you want to. Uh, but this is for my New South Wales branch. It's given me a list of parts, give me a list of quantities, and we go on from there and that's a uh, $10,000 order and it's got 157 lines. So you saw how fast that was. So now let's cancel this one and start again and go through all the features one by one just to show you how flexible this is. And don't forget, you don't have to generate an order automatically. You can just go in here, start putting your part numbers in and quantity and then you can, uh, adjust, you can adjust it accordingly and send the email off. Or you can generate the order and then you can come back in here and edit as required. So uh, let's move forward now and go to the generate order screen and we'll just go through the options. Okay, so the most common uh, feature that people will use in the generate order screen is the min max levels. So up here you can choose below min or below max and you can choose up to min or up to max. So you may, for example, have a situation where you're ordering for the start of next month so it's a monthly order so you might want to go anything below max and up to max but if you're ordering during the month you'll probably want to go anything below min and either up to max or up to min depending on the time of month early on in the month you'll probably go up to max later on in the month until you get to your monthly room order you'll probably want to go up to min just to keep that stock down a little bit towards the end of the month so that's your min max settings and don't, don't forget that min-max settings, the min-max numbers on your stock file can be generated automatically as well. And that's in another video I made. So it's really easy just to tweak these numbers, push the button, and uh, you'll have brand new min-max reorder levels. So that's great because some products uh, are steady products. They're your bread and butter and they won't change throughout the whole year. But there are some products uh, that can go in and out of trend quickly. Uh, also seasonal reordering. So where you're in the farming industry and you might have um, the uh, different seasons coming up, you may want to increase or decrease your orders according to this time last year. Let me show you how to do that. So basically we go replace forecast sales. Now when you choose replace forecast sales, you've got your sales here that you want to replace. So I can replace today's sales the last seven days, 28 and 90. Or, as I said, in regard to seasonal reordering, you can say, I want this month last year. Uh, you can change it. I mean, it's just putting dates in there, so you can change them to whatever you like. It's completely flexible. So if you wanted to base your reorder on what you sold over a six month period last year, you can do that. Now, when you do replace sales uh, from since last order, uh, then, what will happen is when you did the last order, it kept a record of the invoice number at that time. So basically it knows if you want to replace sales from last time you placed an order, it'll look at invoices uh, from this number onwards and replace those sales. So that's how that works. So it's a really handy feature to have. Let's go to the other one that's fill customer orders. So basically if you've got customer orders in the system, uh, you can adjust for stock, you can adjust for supplier order and so on and so forth, that's down here. But basically what it'll do, 
is it'll order products that you have on customer order that haven't already been ordered using this method. If you're just ordering products um, using the other features, uh, then they're not going to be tagged as being ordered based on a customer order. But if you use this, uh, it'll tag that customer order as being ordered. Uh, so that's fill customer orders. And then display all products. <clears throat> now this is handy if you've got a supply with 50 or 100 products, you can display all the products. It'll tell you what you've got in stock in the actual screen. Uh, it'll give you the sales stats, it'll give you your alternates, etc. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, but basically this is another way of including all the products. So let's go ahead and go below min up to max. Uh, we're doing this for New South Wales branch. Here are some filters over here. So basically you can filter down for a certain group or subgroup of products, a brand, and also any of these filters down here. Um, down in the lower box here, you got include customer orders, back orders, supplier orders, etc. So you can basically adjust for all the orders, supplier and customer orders in the system, and also for negative stock or, um, or positive stock, it'll adjust for that. And then you can actually just generate, and uh, that will generate an order for you. So here's our order. Now, don't forget that this is just generated from your min-max settings. If your stock's not right, if your min-max levels are not right, if the customer orders and supplier orders aren't in the system, it's not going to be accurate. So you need to make sure that you're using the software from the start to the finish for to get the best result out of this screen. So here it is. Now you can go in and you can delete items, you can add items, you can change the quantity. Uh, what I used to do when I had a warehouse, I used to print this order out, put it on a clipboard, walk around and check it. Uh, but look, if your stock's accurate, like I say, it's probably not required. And you can probably sit here. Now, I didn't have the controls that you guys have when I was using Peach Software for my importing business. I'm going to show you what they are. So while I've got the order in the page here, I'm going to turn on my graph. Oh, there you go. There's our, there's our sales graph. So we can see while we've got the order open, we can see our 24 month sales graph. Such a great feature. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is probably something that most of you aren't aware of, is alternates. So if we go alternate parts, there's another screen that comes out and we can undock that screen as well. We can put that down here and I'm going to show you what the purpose of that is. Uh, so that I can show you that, I'm just going to insert another part number here. So I'll just click my plus and I'll put in a Z9. There's our Z9, there's our sales over the last 24 months. Now it doesn't have any numbers, so how about we put some numbers up there. There we go, nice and easy. And uh, down here you have the alternates. Now the purpose of the alternate screen when you're doing a supplier order is, I've got a Z9 and it's asking me to order one, probably based on min-max levels or based on customer order. Um, but maybe I don't need any, so if I did have no stock of this one, if this was zero and it was asking me to order, let's say, 50, down here, it also shows me that I have an alternate, an L3001 from a different supplier, and I've got 32 of those in stock. So the fact that it wants me to order some, but I've got some alternates in stock, I may decide not to put that order through so I can just delete that line. On the sales side of things, you've also got this, and this is just also known as. So if somebody rings you or inquires on Pitch Online, for example, about a WZ9, it'll flick back to a Z9 because that's the alternate. It's also known as a Z9. Uh, so there's something there. So as I go down through this, you can see the sales graph on the right hand side and that's great information. So if I wanted to change something, I'd just go in there and change the quantity. If I wanted to delete something, I can just click on the cross and that gets rid of that part number. So there you go. Um, a little bit about the screen here. So the status there, if I've got multi-branches, it tells me where the stock is. If I've got stock connect, and you can ring up and ask about this, but if I've got stocks connect or supply connect, I can see what stocks 
in other shops around me if they're using Peach software, so that's very handy. And I can also see through Supplier Connect what my supplier has in stock. In fact, if I had Supplier Connect on this account and I click the Supplier Connect button, it would then go out, it would come back, and it would tell me what the supplier can supply here. I've got a separate video on this, so you should watch that. And it'll also update the pricing according to the supplier's current pricing. So it's a great way to keep your prices up to date without having to get files, import files, and update the pricing that way. So there's your supplier order. Now let's have a look at a couple of the other fields down here. Um, that was the alternate, so that's what opened up this one here. Uh, then you've got your in stock and where it is. And here's the available. Now this is a pretty new screen as well. So this is stock forecast. It's a, it's a rough forecast tool, but it's very handy. So basically if I've got customer um, uh, orders, uh, at, let's say scheduled customer orders in front, out front of uh, the different months, then they would be accounted for here. If I've got supply back orders in the system, they would be accounted for here. Supplier orders, um, sorry, that back orders is customer back orders. As you know, if you've got your full back order system turned on, uh, back orders are separate to a customer order. So you'd have your back orders, they'll always be up in front. You've got your customer orders and your schedule on which they expect delivery. You've got your supplier orders and the expectation of when those supplier orders are going to come in and the quantity. You've got a 12 month average of each of sales for each month. So it's giving you a bit of a usage, typical usage. And then down the bottom, you've got available. So when you've got a full one of these stock forecast grids, uh, you'll see that when the available goes down to a dangerously low level, and that way you know when you can top it up. So that's a great new feature. There's your supplier orders and it tells you what suppliers you've got orders on for this product. There's your back orders, so they're the customer back orders. Um, and if you had any customer orders, of course, you click here and you would see them. If you want to add a new line, you can just click the plus, it'll insert a line and cross to delete a line. Uh, you can resort the line by part, by ref part, by location, by entry line. So if I wanted to resort it by part, just go like that. And now it's in part number order. Or I can resort it back to line entry and it'll take it back to where it was. So that's a great feature as well. Um, I think that's probably most of the important stuff. Uh, when you put the order through, of course, put in the ETA date. So the ETA date's not today's day, it might be two or three months ahead, or it might be next week, but you can put that in, and that way it'll show up in that um, usage graph that I've just showed you, the scheduling. Anyway, as you go down through the products here, you can see all the details about the products down below, and that's it, so just F10, and you can email that order straight off to the supplier. So I hope that helps. Um, if any part in here is a kit item, it will tell you. And um, if you've got multiple warehouses, like I said, uh, you can see where it is. So if you've got, let's say, stock in vans or stock in overflow warehouses or stock out with customers, consignment stock, uh, that's where it's gonna show up. Uh, so anyway, you can see there, we've done lots of improvements and I hope that helps and, uh, and I hope it's interesting for you. Hey, if you have any questions, I mentioned Supply Connect, I mentioned Stock Connect, I mentioned Recalculate Min Max Reorder Levels. If any of those things you don't know about or you need training on, please don't hesitate to get in touch with Peach Support. They're great at doing that sort of stuff. And we've got videos online with all that. So first port of call, they might send you a link to the video. And then if you've still got questions, don't hesitate to call and ask them to log in and show you how it works. Anyway, that's all for me today, and I hope that's helpful. We shall talk again soon. Thank you, and goodbye.